Hey there, hopefully non-evil humanoids, I'm Pruitt and this is Jim Davis. In today's WebDM asks the important questions. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? Or, probably more accurately, what do we do with these shadows? Today on WebDM. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guys. This episode is brought to you by Dungeon Fog's Project Deus Alpha. Live now. Project Deus sets out to revolutionize map making by creating a bundle of tools with tabletop role playing in mind. Create your interconnected worlds, regions, cities, and battle maps with everything from political borders to climate boundaries to interactive objects. It's never been easier to create maps for any kind of game. Dungeon Fog makes incredible map making software, and Project Deus takes it to the next level. Check it out, links in the description and comments. Okay, Jim, uh, without any Alec Baldwin references, let's talk about shadows. Let's do it. Yeah, because uh, we got that in the past. <laughs> um, so it's been a while since we've talked about uh, a specific monster. Uh, yeah. A lot of people uh, request that we do this. Uh, so can you tell me why why we would pick a, a one half CR creature to feature in such a way? Oh, just what a beautiful quick capsule. Monster. Let's 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 have the opening <laughs> review here before we get into yeah, yeah. the nitty gritty of it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're talking about shadows today, medium-sized undead, as uh, you know, like I said, a, a CR uh, one half, and they're a bit of a unique monster in fifth edition because they're one of the few that like can reduce an ability score uh, by you yeah. know by a, a random amount. So, like intellect of hours will uh, you know can reduce your int to zero, but it's a different mechanic, not quite the same. So shadows like they have this holdover from other editions. Of like draining strength and in almost every edition of D, &D that i'm aware of like they produce other shadows from creatures that they kill and they do do so via strength training and that's that's kind of it like they're really a, a, a one-trick pony uh, in that sense and are otherwise fairly uh fairly weak uh despite having a, a a robust set of resistances and immunities but uh, i find them really cool because of their living shadows composed of like evil and maliciousness and uh, mm -hmm. There's just a lot of f fun things you can do with like the themes of shadows and like setting up encounters with them and the implications that humanoids that they kill are also raised as shadows that keeps this monster as one of my favorites, uh, despite the fact mm -hmm. that they're relatively simple in one note. No, I, yeah, I totally get that. So uh, let's let's start uh, like we do. Let's let's start getting into um, the stat breakdown and talking about how DMs can use them and how players can can fight them. Uh, yeah. You know, they don't have uh, a crazy AC. No. By in, in base, <laughs> you know, it's only AC twelve. Yep. Uh, they only have sixteen <laughs> average hit points. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit faster than usual. Like that's something on, you know, the 40 feet, but still yeah. that's not a crazy amount. Their stealth isn't even really that high. It's only a plus four. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, none, of their, none of their stats are that high either. So they have low saves too. Yeah. They really don't exactly. have a lot going for them at this stage. <laughs> but like you said, they do have a, a lot of resistances. They have a couple of immunities. They're vulnerable mm -hmm. to radiant because duh, like, Right. Holy light damage should hurt something that is made of shadow. That Certainly. that just makes yeah. sense in the fact that they're undead. Um, but they they also have a pretty robust uh, condition immunities here, where mm -hmm. exhaustion, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, restrained. They don't like. There's a lot of conditions that you can't inflict on them. So that that right. is something to think about for the DM. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of ways to like, like keep them from coming at you uh, if they want to get to you. And I think that's one of the hallmarks of a shadow is that if they want to get to the party, they can, they can fairly easily. Like they might not have a, mm -hmm. you know like a, a really great speed or really any special movement at all. They can't fly or or anything. Um, they're not incorporeal. They can't pass through objects, although they uh, can. Mm -hmm. Uh, squeeze through spaces that are narrower than one inch or move freely through um, uh, spaces that are one inch or wider. Uh, and squeezing just gives them disadvantage on, uh, I think, attacks and uh, enemies have advantage to hit them while they're in that, uh, in that space while they're squeezing through. And so the other big thing they have going for them is that a lot of their damage resistances are like from traditional magical 
damage sources. So like acid, cold, fire, lightning, thunder, and then uh, non-magic uh, weapon attacks. And so like that 16 HP gets doubled for a lot of things. Uh, so, yeah. you know, you can expect to, to, to last for you know, a little bit, but really where I see them as shining from a DM perspective is in their interplay between uh, like light levels, obscurement and uh, hiding because their shadow stealth uh, feature lets them take a hide action whenever they're in uh, dim light or darkness as a bonus action, meaning that they can move attack and then still have a bonus action left over to hide once they break line of sight and like, 40 feet of movement even that extra 10 feet over base speed is sometimes enough to just like slip around a corner and now i'm hiding or slip around you know a, a, a you know large creature and now i can be hiding and when you think of the kind of environments that these creatures might be in like mausoleums and crypts and catacombs oh, yeah. they are places that have lots of 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 spots to break line of sight little alcoves and you know mm -hmm. side passages and and nooks in the ceiling sarcophagi yeah just little holes in the ground where places you know like graves have been dug but haven't been filled yet they're just like a cemetery at night like there's so many places for these things to hide that they can kind of hit and run and uh wear a party down and i think that's where they shine uh no uh, you know iron ironic intended <laughs> <laughs> that's where they gloom <laughs> yes that's yes they're there yeah so bring your gloom stalker definitely right. um, but but uh, uh, uh of course they're one of their last abilities is a weakness actually it's sunlight weakness because of course you know uh sure if you're yeah, in sunlight, disadvantage on pretty much everything yep. Um, yep but but to get to their to their main the the the, the heat of the meat here which is their strength mm -hmm. drain they don't have yeah. a big attack it doesn't do a lot of damage but the strength score is reduced. There's no save for it. It no. just is. Yeah. So yeah, if they're attacking from it. hiding, they're yeah. So if they're attacking from being hidden, they're getting advantage on that. Mm -hmm. So that plus four is a little bit better because you get advantage on that attack as a DM. Uh, but yeah, getting your strength score reduced by one D four, and if you die by this, uh, if you get re reduced to zero, you die. And uh, mm -hmm. And anyone who dies from a shadow re raises as a shadow. Yeah, you know, yeah four hours later, humanoids, as long as they're good. Uh, raise, yeah. mm -hmm. Or excuse me, not yeah. evil. Yeah, so non evil. Even yeah. you, if you're you, evil, even you're you safe. druids out there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you've if you've committed a life of evil, uh, and and uh, you know despicable actions, then the shadow has nothing. They don't want anything to do with you. I mean, they're still going to mm -hmm. fight you, right? Like it's just you're not going to become one because you're already uh, uh, evil. Yeah. Um, so that that's an interesting stipulation. I don't remember that from prior editions, but that D four strength drain uh, or re rather reduction. There's no difference between drain and damage in this edition um is is real kicker and because of like strength is often a dump score for uh for characters in fifth edition given the way that stats break down and how you can use them it it puts it it it, it puts the fear <laughs> i think in in uh in characters that they have at first level of like this thing could take me out very easily and there's not much I can mm -hmm. do with it. And it stretches that through, uh, you know, a larger range band. And like, if this, if the shadow was any stronger, you know, if it was, had a higher AC, if it, if it had like immunity to non-magic weapons or, or something like that, you know, if it was just any tougher, I think this would be too much. But given that like a paladin or a cleric sneezes in its direction and it's gone, <laughs> like, I think it's, I think the strength drain works, you know, in the moment it's a peril, but outside of that encounter it's it, it's much less so most definitely um and and also you know uh unlike prior editions where you know ability score drain can be a little bit more of a permanent thing yeah uh, yeah depending depending because there were a lot more things that did drain your ability scores uh here you know getting it back on a short or a long rest is fine but like you said in that moment that short rest is an infinity amount of time away if you're yeah. in the combat and things are going sideways, right? So that's right, why there right. there is that peril is still there for all those non-martial characters who decided, 
I don't need strength or those high dex <laughs> characters who are like, ah, dexterity is everything, right? It's like, well, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I, I do like that uh, that the two monsters in the monster manual that that attack uh, ability scores attack both strength and intelligence. Given how like those used to be top dog in D and D, and now it seems like they've increasingly become uh, dump stats for our dexterous, charismatic uh, party members. But um, Most yeah, it's. It's something to be mindful of, right? This is a CR one half creature, which means like if you throw one of these at a first level party, then it's like one of these. And personally, I wouldn't do it if they didn't have a cleric or a paladin. Like this is a kind of monster that, uh, you know, some folks call a trick monster in which mm -hmm. that there is a trick to fighting it. And once you know that trick, it's ridiculously easy to dispatch with, with these sorts of creatures. Like cockatrice is an example of that. Like once you learn that a lizard chicken should be shot at from far away, don't let it touch you then that's yeah. they become trivial encounters you know it's just the first few times you run into and it's difficult and so like if you've got a if you've got a party that has a light cleric or really any cleric or a paladin then this is a monster to throw at them so that that character gets a moment in the spotlight uh even yeah you know, even so first level party 2d6 plus 2 necrotic damage is nothing to nothing to, to, to sneeze at that's a strong attack um but it only gets one of them you know, it's got a 12 AC uh, and well, yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's not stand up monster, you know, most definitely. And if in a, especially if a DM isn't using the movement and hide ability every time, which to right. me, if you're using this, you should because that that is how this creature would behave because it's all it's really got. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you know, players, you know, once you see one of these things, it's that's you know circle around uh get the wagons around the weak ones <laughs> and you know make sure that nobody can get to it and there's plenty of light and you should be okay i mean that's that's yeah. really another another thing is providing enough light so that they can't use that shadow stealth uh mm -hmm. but again mm -hmm. you know that's that's just going to be one of those things that you you have to learn yeah uh, daylight a daylight spell is going to be real handy here because that's like a 30 foot radius no concentration bright light like even though it's not sunlight you know it's not like inter, you know imposing disadvantage on them it's like yeah they got to cross 30 feet to get to you now visible you know that's a very different kind of of encounter than like oh crap we ran into these in the dark mm -hmm. you know where it's like everybody that doesn't have dark vision they literally can't see them at all uh you know every everyone that that does have uh dark vision it's like yeah they can't the shadows can't just hide right in front of you they still need to break line of sight but it's like it's not good you have disadvantage to perceive them like you want to get light on you as soon as possible with one of these preferably daylight and mm -hmm. again for dm sort of like thinking about how they would use this in a lower level party put it in a mausoleum put it in like a sepulcher or something where it's like yeah in this tiny little grave building there's a shadow and you're if the party gets in trouble they just run outside into daylight the shadow's not going to follow mm -hmm. them and you can use a monster like this to scare them to kind of like show them how nasty these things are without like worrying that they're all going to die and be drained in a dark dungeon and <laughs> gotta like start all over and <laughs> now your players are upset with you for that like mm -hmm. uh, the context of which they encounter a monster is is really important and being able to like get out of this thing's reach is uh is is, is going to be important if it's the first time a party's fighting them and they're low enough level yeah. yeah most definitely um and so uh to to kind of move on to uh more uses like campaign wide as opposed to yeah. specific like tactics and everything we, I know we've talked about, I forgot when, a long time ago, uh, maybe it was like evil campaigns or something like that, but like uh, uh -huh. using shadows as a catalyst for like an apocalypse, yeah. you know, if there's no not a lot of heroes around and they just roll through a valley and just start killing everyone, you know, you got D4 hit point NPCs everywhere that just drop, you know, because they're yeah. overrun and that just creates more shadows. Like, this is one of those places where people wonder how to run an evil campaign. Well, guess what? If you're in the Valley of Shadows, it's pretty good to have a bunch of evil characters because they got, but they still have to get to the end. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. They're not going to, yeah, they, they're they the ones that the, uh, that aren't creating a problem there. Yeah. I, I do like the way that the, that this thing creates monsters from non-evil humanoids and what that mm -hmm. says that you could do with like evil characters, evil humanoids and the like, like. I think that that's really interesting and, and fun because it might like 
showcase like who is it that fights these creatures like we think of it as like good paladins and and sort of holy mm-hmm. warriors of the like and there's a lot of reasons for them to fight them but you could just as easily see a group of undead hunters that are like listen our souls are already forfeit our our you know we we don't have anything to lose by dying to one of these creatures and like this could be a last act of redemption for for these evil characters as they've you know reached a point in their life where they're like yeah maybe evil isn't that great maybe like we shouldn't be doing all these despicable things and we could try to make amends by fighting creatures that aren't necessarily like as drawn to us than others you know i think that mm-hmm. could be really interesting uh to to have for a campaign frame because man wouldn't it be cool like you're okay you're you know you're traveling along you know rural roads and you know mick fantasy setting and like yeah <laughs> like you come across a village and like none of the bodies that are there like clearly something terrible's happened here there's bodies all over the place things have died even the animals but like none of the people have shadows like none of their bodies do you know yeah and like yeah. the slow dawning realization of like we got to get out of this place by the time nightfall comes <laughs> you know yeah, <laughs> most definitely. <You> know. <laughs> Especially if you're looking for a very specific, you know, NPC, and so you're having to like sh- move the bodies around, and mm-hmm. you know, there's you want to prevent care, you know, carrion uh, devourers or whatever to yep. come and eat the bodies, and and you know you have to be there for a while. It's it's one of those little clues that you can just put in, uh, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. you know when nightfall comes, uh, so do do the shadows fall. Um, oh yeah. So. So yeah, um, if you if you enjoy in ideas like that, you can hop over to Patreon, by the way, and uh, follow us over there for a whole other podcast every week, uh, where Jim and I just go on and on about the things that we love about this this uh, hobby that we love. So uh, just, just check that out. Um, so Jim, yeah, we discussed that low level these things are, are dangerous, but as you move on up, um, they are not as dangerous. But yeah, not as it doesn't it. Yeah. mean that they have to stay that way. No, no, not at all. Because not at all. Because a, 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 a DM, there, there's a whole thing that you can do, which is just look at every other shadow creature, and just pick a couple of abilities here and there. If you want to scale your shadows up, yeah, because it is part of a campaign, and you want yeah. it to be more um, uh, of a challenge. Uh, what what are some of the things that you could possibly do there? Yeah, to, to me, the big standout ones for shadows in terms of modifying them, you know, maybe increasing their uh, their challenge rating alongside it is like treat them like actual shadows. Like it's mm-hmm. curious when you read the rules expression of this creature that's, you know, supposed to be sort of a two dimensional shape, right? It's a shadow that like it seems to have a body. It's not incorporeal. It can't occupy the same space that uh, another creature does it, it's affected by difficult terrain which kind of makes sense to me right like there's still a ripple in the shadow i guess as it crosses broken ground or something you know but like mm-hmm. if you really wanted to make it terrifying from for like mid-level D characters then i would start looking to things like invisible stalker and uh air elemental for language and abilities that they're like this thing can like pass through any opening something has to be completely sealed to keep one of these out you know mm-hmm. or or you have to be lit from all angles <laughs> and, and you know uh, there has to be no shadows in here at all for there to be uh, literally no shadows and like develop it from there like can this thing hide in another creature's space can it hide up your yeah. sleeve or in your backpack um and you know if you've got a monster that can do that then that's really terrifying this thing can like Mm -hmm. get inside your coin purse as you know when you were in the dungeon and follow you back somewhere while you're just you know completely unaware of, of something that's happened or or maybe you know you have one of those classes that has like you know the ability to detect undead or something like that they've got like you know, detect evil or paladin's divine sense or, you know, ranger's primordial awareness. You go, oh, no, there is one. There's an undead very close, very nearby. Mm -hmm. And then it's a matter of, like, finding it. Where is it? How can I, you know, dumping all your stuff out in the middle of sunlight (laughs) to try to (laughs) find this creature that's, like, snuck back with you or something? (laughs) Yeah, especially especially if it's hit a couple people with that strength drain Mm -hmm. and they're trying to get out to, to, to recoup that. And it's just waiting for them to rest 
before yeah. to attack again. Yes. Uh, another yeah. another one is 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 using like shadow stride. So mm-hmm. yeah, it can just it, it uses the plane of shadow to 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 move from one side of the room to the other. Uh, yeah. Is another way of kind of just making this thing just that much more freaky and 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 terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think about using light as tr- difficult terrain? So if it's br- mm-hmm. if there's bright light, that becomes difficult terrain for this thing to move in because it's a shadow. And so if there's enough light, it's harder for it to move around. It can still, but it's mm-hmm. it, obviously it's a little more difficult. I, I think that's one way to kind of counterbalance, uh, kind of beefing these things up. Sure. Yeah, that that, is, that could be an interesting way of doing it, of, of sort of treating another effect that isn't terrain as difficult terrain. I think that could be really interesting, especially if it's like magic light or something like that. That it's got to mm-hmm. be more than just torchlight, because to me, like a torchlight would be the the shadows best home right there's flickering shadows all over oh, when something's lit by torch yeah. or candlelight but like the steady bright light of a magic light it just is it casts such a this shadow in such stark relief and isolates it that it i can see it justifying why that would slow it down because it, mm-hmm. it's not connected to the other shadows around it definitely and if anyone out there hasn't seen the doctor who episodes uh that i think it's called the library or the library of something uh, mm-hmm. uh, but it's a, a, a David Tennant era, and they have these things called the Vashta Narada, and oh, they yeah. are literally shadows that, if you are in complete darkness, they will just eat you. And it's it's like one of the best expressions I think of what shadows can be, as far as like a truly terrifying monster in a dungeon full of darkness. Mm. Um, I, I, I that's just one of the things that I can't not think about with shadows because it's so perfect. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I, I I definitely love that episode and, and and agree. There's a lot of great moments of like, you know, oh god, it's it's in it's in the suit with me, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, you have um, two shadows now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <there> <laughs> like you look down and you are casting two shadows. Like you're, you're pretty <laughs> aft at that moment. Exactly. Yeah, and those are fun ways to introduce them too, right? Like, yeah, you notice that someone else has a, a new shadow, or like that you're casting a shadow on one wall and the opposite wall where no one else is casting a shadow, and like this thing, mm-hmm. like I like to run them as this. They can sort of change their shape and their appearance as well, so that they can, uh, you know, when they appear on the wall, they can appear as different creatures or something else. Maybe you know, you rule that they appear as any creature that they have themselves have turned into a shadow or something like that and and you know Mm -hmm. shadows that have been around a long time and have generated other shadows to a considerable degree like those are the ones that get beefed up into these higher level shadows like you know but i really do like running them that they can sort of like do essentially shadow puppetry on a wall which brings me to one of my favorite uses for them in a campaign, which was as necromancers summoning them to put on shadow puppet plays. And that <laughs> there was a whole setting <laughs> that I had where the part of a, a you know, a theatrical tradition was that necromancer, uh, you know, directors will summon a bunch of them and cast them up on a wall and, and, you know, use the fact that they can appear as any shape, uh, as, as part of this, uh, you know, entertainment. Um, and in that sense, I, you know, I give them the ability to do that as it also opens up the door for like more humorous interactions with a shadow. Uh, you know, if you're mm-hmm. not going for pure horror of like, you know, this shadow's on the wall, but it's like making fun of you or like trying to convince you to come this way or something like that, you know, and mm-hmm. present the initial encounter as something that's maybe different. And then it's trying to trick them because it's, you know, evil, undead, life draining uh, creature. Yeah. So before we get out of here, let's let's. I uh, just want to ask you a quick question. Some 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 white room theory crafting here. Oh yeah. Because some people say this. Uh, <laughs> can a shadow really kill a twentieth level character? I mean, in theory, it could. Um, you know, let's let's. If we want to really look at it, then then let's take a look. It, it's got a stealth of four, uh, so that's not a great stealth. And the you know the likelihood that a twentieth level character is going to be able to uh, perceive it uh, is fairly good. It also only has a plus four to hit. And even if it's managing to pass that uh, stealth versus perception against that 20th level character and get close enough to that 20th level character, like, all right, so it's got advantage and plus four to hit. I I don't love those odds uh, for hitting really, you know, what I would expect that even like a wizard or a bard or something that has a really low AC at those levels would have. Um, And then it only gets one attack. So like, the d4 strength uh, reduction isn't part of the damage so it doesn't crit 
if you happen to crit, it's just D4. It's always D4. And like mm -hmm. you, that shadow, that 12 AC, 16 hit point, vulnerable to radiant damage shadow, then has to survive the next round in order to hit a second time. And then it has to roll max damage twice in a row, having also survived a round uh, versus a 20 yeah. level character. I think it's a pure white room thing. Like, yeah, in theory, they could. Anybody that has eight, eight strength. If they rolled two <laughs> max in a row, they could. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't. I I think this is a non-issue, um, and and that twentieth yeah. level character is going to take their turn and obliterate this thing. You know, now fifty of them, fifty shadows. Uh, well, no, that sounds like a fun fight for a twentieth level character. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole <laughs> other encounter, and you should try it out and tell us how it is. Uh, and uh, you know, you could do that down here in the comments right after you like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications and whatnot uh, to help us out. And uh, let us know uh, how you're liking the show. You want it longer? You want it shorter? We'll see what we're doing. Uh, but we'll uh, see you next week. Have a good game. Everybody.